Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show. My name is Ray Hewer, and I'm so excited that you're tuning in for a show that's able to happen every single weekday, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have an amazing group that we are featuring today. Zach is here with us, and I cannot wait for you to learn about the fun he's going to bring during this episode, so stick with us. Hey everyone, good morning. Thanks for tuning in to the Teach Better Today morning show where the Teach Better team is to join you live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, LinkedIn, and of course as an episode of our Teach Better Talk podcast. We have Zach Edwards here with us. Zach, how are you feeling this morning? Doing great. I appreciate you having me on. Yes, I'm so excited to learn about all that you're doing to support educators and your passion, your background, and getting into the space that you're currently working in. So tell us a little bit about yourself as we start off this conversation. Okay. My name is Zach Edwards. I'm actually the creator of Historical Conquest. Now, I'm going to go a little bit back. Uh, so back in time, uh, back in high school, I actually left high school not liking history because of how it was taught. My my teacher... Um, I loved him. He was great, but he was a coach. And so he was always gone. And so just the way that it was presented to us was not a way that students, myself especially, uh, enjoyed. So actually, when I went off to college, my my English professor said, create a product that would change the world. But for me as a individual, and I said, OK, so I, I didn't like history, how I was taught, but I like games and like 95 percent of kids love games. And so I thought there had to be a way of putting the two together. And that actually started off historical conquest. Funny little trope here. My uh, my wife, I just got married at the time. I spent all this money towards it. And my wife wisely told me to put away the game and go get a real job. So I put away the game. I, go, I went and got a real job for about 10 years. And then I came back and started teaching kids about entrepreneurship. And they wanted to see what I produced. So I brought it out. They played a few games. They wanted more. And that was the start of it. I got partners and everything else. That was actually at one decade ago. And so with that decade of experience, we also had the experience of working with a lot of teachers in schools. And as a, everyone knows, you have paper products that are expensive to have in schools, especially if every student is supposed to have their own set. Because in our game, it's each person has their own deck of cards. And so they said it's too expensive. And so we have to share it. And because we have to share it, it's always us that had to clean up after them. So we decided that, you know what, maybe we need to go in a different direction. So we actually, we have our physical company, which we will never get rid of, physical gaming, but we also have our digital now. And Zogos Gaming is our digital platform. And the basic idea is we want to provide the same kind of educational engagement um, as the physical games, but with the digital. Now, most people, especially because of COVID, they have tablets, they have um, devices of some sort or way, some way of getting on the internet. So our product is web-based. And the intention is that we will actually have a one or multiple games for every subject in K through 12 education. We started off with Historical Conquest, that was our, our flagship game. And we also have uh, two other games, one that's actually gamifying uh, testing. And then we also have two games that are coming up right now. Uh, with the help of the ASA, um, who has a desire for uh, career readiness, we are creating Debt Free Millionaire, which is our financial game. Uh, we have another one called Panic Attack, which is actually put together with a, the help of a lot of mental health specialists to help kids to learn to manage and cope with their, their, their mental health concerns. And so we put all these games together in order to make it more accessible for kids, to make it more fun. We also have incentive programs inside where kids, they can't buy our coins inside our system, but what they can do is they can earn them through gameplay, academic achievement, and also doing things off the screen. Yes, we are a tech company that wants kids off our screens. I mean, I'm, I'm a tech CEO, but I'm also a parent of six kids, which, right? am I right? Jeff has six kids as well? Uh, actually, you know, our team is full of really, really great parents. 
I Josh, I think, has the most. Josh has six kids for sure. Josh has six kids. Yeah. Right, yeah. But Chad's close there. He might have six himself. I think Chad's also there. So we just are, we love kids. You know us here on the Teach Better Team. Oh, yeah. And so as as a tech developer and also a parent, I don't want my kids to be on the screens all day. I want to be able to incentivize them to get off. So we have things like being active, you get points. Uh, being uh, social, you get points. And the, the big one is volunteering. We actually have a system where kids can go on, find uh, local projects that are happening around their, their city or such, and go do that and earn coins on the system. But the great thing about this is it, you can, don't just use it for like in-app purchases. You can actually use them for scholarships after, when you're graduating. So it's a great way of getting this together. Now, caveat, I actually have, um, this is actually an MVP stage right now. So we are just finishing up the development of Zogos Gaming and getting it out. We actually have 500 subscribers. We maxed it out because we didn't want everyone to see our bugs. And when we get those bugs worked out, then we'll release it to the rest of the world. But Ray, I, I really appreciate you bringing me on, especially because we're not done yet, but we're looking for help and also insight from teachers around everywhere. Well, and this is going to be a perfect conversation for many, many educators in our community because so many of our community are committed to mastery learning practices, which many of them then have opportunities for brain breaks or to incorporate different modalities into learning and really giving students the opportunity to explore content, enjoy it, give feedback. I mean, this is going to be really great. The other thing that you know uh, that you noted earlier was gamification, which I know so many people in our community are taking advantage of, especially those using the grid method, which is our mastery framework, because it works perfectly with gamification. So this is going to work out really well as far as the conversation. You know, Zach, in case our community here has some newbies that aren't familiar with the term gamification, do you mind telling us a little bit about that? Yeah, gamification is basically to, it's a way of engaging students into the education process. A lot of times it has to do with, just think of a game. I mean, think of any game that you like. What are certain things in that game that attract you to playing that game? Uh, just so everyone knows, we do a lot of focus tests on kids. One of the big things that they want is they want two things. One, they're fine with education. They actually, talking to the kids, they actually do not have, uh, they're not against education and learning, but they want two things to come with it. One, they want to be engaged with what they're actually learning. Activities are the biggest things. They want to be feel like they're part of it. Being in a classroom and just listening to a lecture or being given a book, not what they want. They want to actually understand what the what is being taught by being part of it. And gamification is a great way of bringing them into it and allowing them to feel that they're part of it, giving incentives. So another thing that the kids were talking about in the focus groups is they love they they're fine with education, but one thing that they want is they want to know where what's the results? What are they getting out of this? A lot of times they have to wait for 12 years in order to see any results. And that frustrates a lot of them. But a lot of great teachers are out there. They're figuring out ways of making it so the kids can actually see the future. Now, they, want not, they won't be able to get into a career or even go to college for 12 years. But they're going to be able to see all the steps going up to it or what to look forward to in the future. Gamification also allows them to create incentives. So a lot of schools, they create these markets. And throughout the year, the kids get to collect these coins or points to be able to use in their market. Now, this is great. One of the downfalls I see of these types of markets also is the fact that a lot of the kids, they don't have enough coins to be able or enough points to use those towards anything. So they almost feel like they, they wasted their time trying to do it. But if the kids can actually find steps in order to get to that place or to use small amounts of their coins, then they are actually ready for doing something bigger or seeing what their incentive really is, seeing what the future is. Yeah, game, gamification can be a great way to add a little bit more fun to the day-to-day -day learning that you have in your classroom. For those of you who might be interested, there's tons of blogs over at teachbearer.com slash blogs. And I'm sure Zach could point you to definitely the number of different things to help you with this goal of gamification, adding more fun into the classroom. But Zach, something I really value about 
what you've been discussing so far is not just adding more games to the classroom, but adding more intentionality in those games to the classroom. We're not necessarily promoting, you know, taking your 45 minute period you have with students, knocking it in half and playing bingo for the for the other 20 minutes. We, we really want to see the content be a part of the enjoyment and really help students understand the enjoyment of learning. That's one of the biggest things is a lot of times we want to fill the time up because maybe they're done with with testing or maybe they're done with their assignment. Some of the kids, well, okay, I'll give you an example. My son, he is not very social. And so when he's done with his assignment, which he gets done way advanced of everyone else, he sits and reads. And so he claims he reads like four hours in a day while at school. So half the time he was at school, he was reading. And if he was able to be given other things to be able to do, then why not? It's it's great to be able to use it on the back end. It's supplemental, but especially you don't want to give them a game that's going to be like a game that has nothing to do with the, the topics that they're talking about, like you were saying, Ray. And so this is a great point where you, if you find a game that actually gives them some sort of insight into what they're learning about, it's a great benefit for them. Also, the ability of using AI and things like that that's coming up, that's also great because it also personalizes their experience. So my son, taking an exa as an example, if he's able to be placed into games that will help him depending on the assignment or depending on how he's doing, and like our AI would actually come back and allow you to say, hey, this student needs X, Y, or Z. And you might not have known because you have 30 kids in your classroom, so let me, so the AI is allowed to give a little bit of insight into what could help them or what could help the class collectively and allows the teacher to know that, hey, we're on the right path on this. Maybe we need to just focus a little bit more on this. And so gamification and using technology is a great way of getting ahead of things, especially with the kids uh, a lot, having some extra time that they might be spending on their phones. Hopefully we I mean, a lot of schools are turning away from allowing phones out, but it, reading, reading is great. My kid reads uh, manga, so he's reading, but he's reading things that don't have, uh, really apply. So allowing the kids to be able to see what they're doing, how these games or how these extra programs have to do with what they're learning, it's a great way of getting kids to engage with what they're doing. Yeah, friends, listening to this though, so far, especially those using the grid method, mastery learning framework, this would be great within little scaffolded activities that build up towards mastering the content you're working on. This would be great as enrichment. This would be great as a brain break. This allows then for any period in that learning process to connect back to the content that you as the teacher are working so diligently to support that student in mastering. So lots of good things here, Zach. We're going to transition into our team talk and keep this conversation going. We'll be right back. Thanks for sticking with us. We are here with Zach Edwards and we are continuing to talk about the value of games in the schools and also making sure that these games are very intentional for student learning. Zach's offering one of many opportunities that he has access to to really see our students thrive. Definitely an organization to check out. You know, Zach, as we wrap up this conversation, our team talk section really allows us to share a clear message with our viewers, kind of like a major takeaway that as they head into work or as they're listening on their drive, they just keep in the back of their mind and ponder. We can give them either a challenge or food for thought. What comes to mind as a, a major takeaway you hope that educators are able to grasp from this episode? So, okay, so we go into a lot of technology. A lot of people have concerns about technology and if it might take over the classroom. The, the greatest interaction that any student can have is not on the screen. I'm the first one to say it. I'm a tech uh, 
again, tech CEO, and I want people to be using our games and such, but it's that interaction with the teachers that every student needs and every student desires. Um, and so the connection with the students uh, on in the classroom and then the, the students, when they're outside the classroom, being able to have a household that's uh, allowing them to feel part of it. One of the things that we actually try to do with Zogos is we are actually trying to create an environment for the kids to feel that they're they have a place in their schools, even again, even as tech, we're trying to get kids to feel this um, environment of inclusiveness inside their schools, but also outside their schools where the two worlds collide. And so one thing that we wanted to say to educators out there is continue to, to uh, work with your students inside the classroom and outside the classroom. One of those ways that we do it is we actually do it through gamification. You can actually, the teachers can actually play with their students in games that we provide. Uh, now, some educators go to sports activities with their, their students and are able to, um, to cheer them on at these sports activities. The kids wanna see you in the classroom and possibly outside the classroom if you have the time to do it. So I just want you to know, as I was saying at the very beginning, I became disengaged with my classroom because my coach, my teacher was always gone as a coach. But at the same time, it was great to see the other teachers that were there feeling that I was actually taking a part of their class and I was actually part of them. And it really made a difference when I went off to college and my professors actually sat down with me knew that I was having issues, having struggles in certain things, and would actually sit down and take the time. So taking the time to spend that time with the students, they need you um, just as much as you probably need them. And so this is a, a great relationship between the two. So I just encourage every educator, you may not think that you're touching the hearts of a student, that they might be zoning out, again, my son included, but know that with him especially, I know that he actually knows the things that are being taught. He is listening, even though it doesn't look like he's listening. And that even though he says he doesn't want the interaction, I mean, he doesn't even want the interaction at home because he's very isolated. He has autism, it's a little bit too, but he does want the interaction. He might not show it, but he does want it. And so do your, your students. So many good takeaways from this conversation, Zach. I'm excited for our community to check out your gaming company and explore all the different things that they can take into their classroom, regardless of the grade level that they're currently working in. I love the special shout outs to the finance focus, the wellness focus, and everything in between. So friends, definitely go check that out. Go connect with Zach and make sure that you add him to your professional learning network. Zach, thanks so much for being on the show. Maria, thank you again for allowing me to be on and allowing me to talk to everyone. This is a big part. I mean, things are happening in the education realm and, and kids, uh, yes, have been affected by things like COVID and, and isolating and such, but we are here to make the difference. Not just me, not just you, everyone. It's a, it's a collective um, effort. So I appreciate everyone that's listening to this podcast. Please tell your friends about this podcast. I've actually, I actually found it a few weeks ago and really appreciate all the things. Actually, I really enjoyed last Friday um, <clears throat> and the conversation that was started at the very beginning. Uh, so yeah, go check out this this podcast, their blog and everything like that. Um, come check us out as well. We'd love to, to hear your insight. That's the big part. We want insight. We want to know what you need and want and allow us to develop this program around you. So powerful. Last week, we just mentioned how getting involved outside of your bubble might be something that many of you could challenge yourselves with in 2024, whether you're looking for a nonprofit, national organization, or company that was looking for teacher insights. So this would be a great option for those of you who love a good game. I think all of us love a good game in the classroom that's relevant. So thanks so much, friends. Have an incredible rest of your day, and we'll see you tomorrow on Teach Better Today Morning Show. Bye, guys. Bye. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. 
Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. (laughs) The comments are always so entertaining. (laughs) We'll see you tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.